Hey guys, Foster here. Just a quick note before we get started today. We are doing something very, very cool in 2020. So this year we are going to do 12 language challenges in 12 months. So on the first day of each month, we will start a new language challenge and each challenge will focus on a specific topic or subject to help you really, really improve your English. For example, we are going to have a challenge about phrasal verbs, a challenge about how to use prepositions, a challenge about how to learn grammar without using textbooks. Anyway, it's going to be a lot, a lot of fun, and we would love to have you participate. So if you are serious about your English, you should really check out these challenges to learn more and start improving your English today. Just visit inglesnuicru.com. Okay, on with the show. Se você está com um tempinho livre e está afim de investir em você e no seu inglês, vá lá no cambly.com ou no aplicativo do Cambly. Coloca o nosso código em minutos grátis. O nosso código é inglês de necropodcast. E você vai poder aproveitar uma aula de graça. Gente, assim, eu falo aqui sobre isso todos os dias, né? No ouvidinho de vocês. Então, realmente vale a pena. Todo mundo que fez, manda mensagem falando, Alex, é muito obrigada, valeu muito a pena. Sério, foi uma ótima decisão. E é o seguinte, se você não tem muito tempo, por exemplo, se você tem meia hora por semana, já é ótimo você abrir a boca e falar. Comunicação é tudo na vida. Aqui nós fazemos a nossa parte passando para vocês, né? O que a gente acha importante em inglês. E vocês estão treinando bastante o listening conosco, mas vocês precisam falar, abrir a boca, se comunicar, ultrapassar essa barreira do inglês e nada melhor e nada mais prático do que ir lá no Cambly.com ou no aplicativo do Cambly e ver um professor ou professora, claro, que tem eles lá 24 horas por dia, todos os dias da semana. Então, é isso. Inglês de Negro Podcast em minutos grátis, tá bom? Now, on with the show. Hello, hello, hey guys, and welcome to another episode of English to Crew Haju. As not always, I am here with Felipe today. Felipe, what's up? How are you doing? Hey man, I'm good. Thanks for having me. How are you? <laughs> It is my pleasure. I'm doing well. So for those of you who do not know, Felipe works with me and Alexia. He handles pretty much all of the technical side of English to Crew. And yeah does a lot more than that. I think most people know you. So, Felipe, today we are talking about online education, and I wanted to bring you on the show because you are kind of an expert in online education. Am I? <laughs> <laughs> and out of all of my friends, I think you are probably the most nerdy online education person that I know apart from myself. So yeah, you're up there. Okay. Yeah, it's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> so Felipe, let's just start at the beginning. Do let's start at the very beginning. So where were you born? <laughs> just kidding. Okay. So Felipe, tell me what are some of your interests? Like, could be your hobbies, what are you interested, work-related, non-work-related, what are some potential things that you would try to learn about on the internet? Mm, okay, they're very, like, weird when you put all of them together, because, for example, I love gardening, but I also love coding, so I try to bring them together, which makes it less fun than it should be, so... Yeah, <laughs> you're trying to write Python on your new lilies that you're growing. Yeah, I, I actually I've done that in the past, but for I had an aquarium, and like the the whole idea of having an aquarium is that you have to feed your fish and actually you know just have fun with it. And I automated the process with an Arduino. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. 
So just a quick correction, Felipe. I'm going to be tough on you today. Okay. Feed your fish. Feed my fish. Yes. Okay. The first time I heard feed your fish. Yeah. So you had two E sounds. Okay. Cool. Um, Okay. So you're interested in gardening. You're interested in writing code. What else are you interested in? Mm, Marketing, digital marketing, and like good ways of doing it. Because with Google and these big corporations, I think it can be very creepy when it comes to tracking data and all those things. So I'm normally interested in like good people doing good things, but still making a good business. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we hired you. (laughs) Awesome. So how does this look in terms of online education? Like what are some previous courses that you've taken in the past how have your experiences been can you talk a little bit about that yeah so i think it started when i got my first computer so i think that was back in 2007 maybe 2008 so i was trying to learn photoshop it's like very basic photoshop and i i found some videos i don't remember if it was youtube or a different platform but then I was like, mm-hmm. oh, this is cool. This is free and it's not structured, but I can learn exactly what I'm trying to learn. So if I want to, I don't know, cut a picture, you know, I could do that easily after watching a video. So that was my first contact with learning from the Internet. Yeah, yeah. I think this is something we'll get into. But I think you are especially good at learning online because you're a very... um you're like a self-starter, like you're very autonomous. You don't need too much direction for the most part. So you watch a video and you go do something. Watch a video, go do something. Has that changed over time? Yeah, I think a little bit. I think a little bit. Because now we have, how do you call that? Massive online courses or something? Mm -hmm. MOOCs. MOOCs, yeah. So we have that now and everything is so structured. So, for example, if I want to learn Python, I'll probably find a lot of free courses online. And like just the idea of going through the whole course and that this is actually, you feel like you're doing something. So you kind of like just go through the course and then it's like, "Mm, this is not enough. So I'll probably take another course. And it seems counterintuitive. That's how you say it. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And so before, when there was no structure, I would just find what I needed and get back to work. And now it feels like I have to keep learning until I'm ready. And that's that's counterproductive, right? Yeah. That's interesting. So in general, would you say you are a fan of more structure or less structure when it comes to the way you like to learn? I think it depends. I like to do something first on my own. So, for example, learning a new language. I like to do it my way. And then when I know <laughs> a little bit, I can always go back and try to find some structure. I, I think I feel better if I do it like that. Okay. Okay. Well, you are in the process of improving a new language yeah. with your German currently. How's that going? Like, lately, it's been better. Because, for example, I just found out about that book called uh, Fluent Forever. Mm -hmm. Fluent Forever by Gabriel Weinman. Is that his name? Yeah. Uh, I think it's just something like that. (laughs) Gabriel Weiner. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. And, okay, he has a very different method. I mean, it's not super new, but I haven't heard. I hadn't heard about (laughs) it. And Mm -hmm. I'm trying to follow it. But I'm, I feel better since I already did the traditional method. You know, I learned a lot of grammar, so now I can try a different approach. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of noticed a lot of similar things reading that book. And I think my learning philosophy in general is kind of similar to yours. It's kind of the idea of you have to learn the rules and then you can break the rules, you know? Mm-hmm. Does that make sense to you? That, yeah, it does. Cool. Cool. So can you just give us like an overview, kind of a snapshot of 
what you're doing with your German. Um, how does that process actually look day to day? Okay. So what I try to do at first, I, I had a grammar book and I like rules. I like numbers. So I was like, okay, this book has 80 chapters. So if I do one or two chapters a day, that's 80 <laughs> days or 40, it depends. So I did that for a while. I haven't finished the book, but after some time, I was comfortable with the grammar, with the crazy rules they have, that German has. And now I'm trying to do it a little bit differently. So I'm trying, every day I'm trying to learn new vocabulary, just like a kid, you know? So I, if I don't know a word, I look it up, I make a flashcard, I find a, an, an image so I can remember the image and remember the gender. So it's, it's like I, just like you say in sound school, I'm learning backwards, right? So I tried to, to advance in grammar and then I got back to the basics and with vocabulary, basically. Yeah, yeah, you can say to advance. That's the same thing as to improve or to get better. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I really like that approach that most things that you are learning are going to require like different skills within one goal. And those different skills will take, some will take shorter, some will take longer, some are more fun, some are less fun. So you kind of have to do a little bit of trial and error to know what works best for you. Exactly, exactly. Cool. Okay, more specifically with online education, what kind of materials are you using for your German apart from Fluent Forever? Are you watching any YouTube videos, taking any courses? No. So I learned a lot from the book and now we can do everything pretty much for free. So for example, if I learn a new word, I look it up, right? On Lingui or Google Translate, and then I make a flashcard. But it's not only the word. So I'm not gonna add like dog, cachorro. No. <laughs> <laughs> I added a word, so let's say dog. And then I add an image to it, so a dog. And if it's masculine or feminine, I have my own mnemonics. Mnemonic. 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 Okay. Yeah. So you can kind of forget that first M in the word mnemonic. It starts with an N in pronunciation. Oh, mnemonic. Okay. okay. So yeah, I have that. So for example, dog is masculine, so it's on fire. And if it's feminine, it's like it's wet. So I add, I do that on Photoshop. It's a lot of work. <laughs> I do that in Photoshop, and if it's neutral, because German has neutral nouns, it's just like windy, you know, or very almost transparent because it's neutral. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so just two things real quick. First, the word neutral. I'm almost hearing like a no, no, but it's just new, just like something is new or old, neutral. Neutral, okay. Perfect. And secondly, just for everyone to understand, a mnemonic, a mnemonic device is essentially just a memory device. So like Felipe was saying, you learn something new and then you create, it can be an image or a rhyme or anything to help you remember that. So I could say, I don't know, um, I'm trying to remember my grandmother's phone number. So I think about, oh, the number eight. I remember my birthday when I was eight years old. And that reminds you get the point. You're just connecting two things in your memory together. Okay, cool. How are you doing? How are you setting dogs on fire and stuff like that? Are you doing all that in Photoshop and then exporting it somewhere? Or are you drawing these things by hand? No. How does that look? Yeah, so first I, I looked the image up on Google Images. And then... I copied this image, I paste it in Photoshop, and then I already have like fire, water, and wind, or something very neutral. And then I put it on top, like overlay, mm -hmm. and then I export it. So now I have dog, and I have a picture of a dog on fire, basically. And then I go to Fordvo, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I download a pronunciation. So. Fervo is just a free website that you can download. You have like a lot of options of different, in my case, German people saying dog, right? 
Yeah, Forvo is an online pronunciation dictionary. Highly, highly recommended if you're learning any language. Yep. And then I add that to my flashcard. So, and then in the back of the flashcard, instead of just writing cachorro, I write like, I don't know, my dog ate my homework. So if with all of these tips, I still can't remember, I'll probably remember with the phrase. I don't want to translate it. I just want to understand what a dog is in that language. Right. Yeah. I think that's a fantastic way to go about it. I imagine a lot of people listening to this will think, meu Deus, that's a lot of work. What would you say to people that are thinking, oh, geez, that's way too much work. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> it, it is. So if you think for each word, it takes me like a minute or two to create all those things. And while if it was written in a book, it was just sort of like, right, cachorro, right? And that's like one second. But in this whole process, it's, it creates some a story in my brain. So our brains, they're wired to understand stories. And they're not good with memories, otherwise we just explode because we're seeing things all the time. So when you create this story, it's just like, damn, my Photoshop bro broke. And when I was trying to do that, oh, yeah, that's right. It's This is how you say dog, because my Photoshop broke in that time. So it seems like a lot, but I don't have to go over and over that list again. So short time, it's a lot of work. Long time, I think it's actually better. Yeah, I think that's a, a fantastic learning lesson in general is... Okay, so right now I'm learning the banjo. We will talk a lot about this. <laughs> we already have talked a lot about it. <laughs> but this banjo teacher that I'm learning from on YouTube, the banjo is a very fast instrument, so you're like picking very fast. But he always says, to play fast, you train slow. And that's kind of the idea here, that if you really take your time and create this elaborate mnemonic to remember what a dog is, yeah, maybe that takes a little bit more time up front. But in the long run, you do that once and you're never going to forget what a dog is in German. Exactly. And I have this this fun, funny memory, actually, that I think someone told me when I was a kid that right, like the right side is purple and the left side is green. And since like even today, I remember that when I think about right, like turn right like I see purple and turn left I see green you know I don't know why but I think one of my teachers when I was very little told me that very young yeah huh is that connected to the fact that you're colorblind I don't know I don't know because I only found out about that when I was 23 <laughs> or 24 but it's just I think someone told me or I saw it in a book and she's I still remember that after 20 years. Awesome. Okay. That's very interesting. <laughs> We're going to get to a transition where we start talking about online education in the time of COVID-19. But for now, do you have any other examples of online courses that you've done, online education or just things that you've learned a lot about specifically online, but like pre-quarantine times? Okay, I think I've done some coding courses, React, I think Python, but very basic ones, I know. And mm -hmm. I think that was about it. And some language courses, but they're not very structured. So German, just watching YouTube videos and... French, I did some in the past, but again, like very basic and not very structured. Yeah. What about just like YouTube in general? Like I know that you're, you have specific channels that you like. Do you want to give an example of a channel that you like and why do you like it or what do you learn from it? Okay. So I have this channel that I follow. I used to follow, actually. It's called Learn German with Anya. Anya, I think that's her name. It's just hard to okay. pronounce. And she's basically teaching German in a very fun way. She's very, I like her personality. But it's, again, you're just watching. You feel like you're learning, but 
So you don't feel guilty because you're watching something in German, but at the same time, you're not really practicing. Practicing, you're just consuming information. And as I said, your brain tends to forget things. So what I did... Your brain tends to? Tends mm -hmm. to forget. So what I did, I took one video and I translated this video, like for free. I just, you can do that on YouTube. So mm -hmm. I transcribed it to German. So I was trying to understand every single word she was saying. And I wrote a transcription in German and then I translated the Portuguese on YouTube. And then I realized that that took me, I don't know, maybe one hour for one video of five minutes. And then I thought, okay, I could have watched maybe 10, 12 videos, but that was the only video I actually learned, you know? And it's very similar to like sound school and all the challenges. I could listen to our challenges, but it's not the same as transcribing all of them. Yeah, yeah. Behind the scenes, <laughs> Felipe does most of the transcription, <laughs> which I really appreciate. But I think that's a great point and probably a good place to end this first section of online education chit chat is for me, at least for me personally, the most crucial thing with any sort of education is you have something like delivered to you. It could be a lecture, a video, an audio, whatever. And then you have a way to react to that. So if you're listening to a podcast after the podcast, you are prompted to do something. That might be have a conversation. That might be transcribe the podcast. That might be listen along and try to imitate and chat out the podcast. But if you don't have like an action item, you're essentially just consuming information, which feels good, but it, I don't know. I'm not convinced that it's super, super beneficial most of the time. Exactly. And I wish I had something. This is not a, an ad. But when I see, for example, <laughs> sound school, you guys have minimal pairs, you have beats, right? Pronunciation beats. You have mm -hmm. all those things that you see in all different books. And I really want something like that in German because I have to go to Fordvo, I have to create a thing on freaking Photoshop, and you guys have all of that, you know, it's structured. But what people don't understand normally, and it took me a while to understand, is that I could pay, I don't know, 5,000 years in a course, it's on me. Even if it's the best course in the world, it's on me. You know, I'm going to use that information, that structure, but I have to practice by myself. And I, yeah, it's not easy to accept that. Yeah. All learning is self-learning. And we get that question all of the time. Like, if all of your podcasts are free, can't I just learn with your podcast? Or can't I just learn English with YouTube videos? The answer is definitely, yeah, you can, but good luck because it <laughs> requires a lot of discipline and motivation and you really, really have to be a seriously dedicated, motivated person to do that by yourself. Yeah, I think that's where I stand. Yep, I agree. We will come back with part two of Online Education Talk in just a minute. All right, talk soon. Muito obrigada por ter escutado mais um episódio aqui do nosso Inglês de Micro Rádio. Vocês sabem que nós fazemos o possível e impossível para deixar o inglês mais pertinho de vocês, né? E é um prazer imenso que a gente possa estar acompanhando vocês no dia a dia, na rotina e fazer parte da hora do, da cozinha, de faxina, tomar banho, dirigir, o que for. Então, eu queria aqui deixar bem claro que se você entrar lá no nosso site inglesdenicru.com você vai poder ver um pouco mais do que a gente oferece de produtos além aqui do nosso podcast querido que a gente ama de paixão então vão lá, vão no nosso site né? aquela força pra gente procurem saber mais o que a gente está fazendo e é aquilo né galera cada mês nós temos um challenge novo então eu acho que é a hora de aproveitar é isso. Um beijo grande e a gente se vê no próximo episódio. Bye!